free to disagree when we have to. We find this soul and we will turn this into an extraordinary relationship. We miss this soul and we will see this partnership stagnate and become mechanical and robotic. It is important to note that we are evolving this partnership at a very interesting time, a time of great challenge. You know, 30 years ago, studying in America was the coolest thing any young Indonesian person can do. You know, it's a batch of honor, a social status. But today, there are more Indonesians studying in China than in the U.S. Now, I know you feel you will feel challenged by this fact. And my goal is to reverse that declining trend of Indonesians studying in America and also to get more Americans studying in Indonesia. 30 years ago, <laughs> 30 years ago, what happens in remote places in America was of no significance to us in Indonesia. Today, the foolish act of misguided individuals in some county can cause public outrage, political damage, and even violent incidents outside America. And this is new territory for us. In the age of Twitter, Facebook, and instant media, we will see more of these types of grassroots frictions and provocations, often with asymmetrical effect. Our partnership must find a way to be adaptive and to be resilient while trying to put out these small fires. And most importantly, 30 years ago was still the 20th century, and now we live in the 21st century, which is certain to be the most progressive century in human history. This is gonna be the century where middle class throughout the world will explode, where humanity can potentially come close to achieving zero poverty, where we can come closest to a condition of harmony among civilizations. In this 21st century, democracy and freedom and governance within and between nations will continue to spread. Technology will drive creative explosions and create opportunity for billions, not millions, billions of world citizens. The green economy will take off, the number of emerging economies and developed countries will multiply, and every human being on this planet will be more interconnected by technologies we can't imagine yet, as yet. Both Indonesia and America are trying to reposition ourselves and to find our places in that brave new world. Indonesia will hopefully continue its path as a stable, multi-ethnic democracy, become a competitive, pr prosperous economy, and a regional power with global outreach. As for America, President Barack Obama has said that in the 21st century, the American moment has not passed. Indeed, as President SBY, my president, has said, the 21st century can be everybody's century. It can still be the American century, as well as the Asian century or the African century. If you care to hear my opinion, to recapture that moment, to ensure that the American moment has not passed, America must continue to re relentlessly pro project to the world what is best about America. My family has had first-hand experience with what is best about America. When my father, Hashim Jalal, arrived in this country in the 50s, as the first Indonesian student ever at the University of Virginia, he found that he was without means to continue his studies and pursue his PhD. His family back in Sumatra, back in the 50s, were poor Muslim farmers, as they had been for generations, for centuries. But his American professor, Alfred Fernbach, seeing the potential of this young man, tucked him in, found him shelter, struggled to find him a scholarship, and treated him with respect and kindness until my father did get his PhD in international law. The professor never asked anything from my father in return, only the joy to help another human being from unfortunate circumstances. Years later, it was my turn. In 1983, an American family, the Carlo family in Queens, took me into their home. It was a typical patriotic American family. You know, one of the boys, Michael, my roommate, later became a New York City fireman and he died heroically, tried to save life during 
When I lived with them, they gave me lots of love. Blind to the color of my skin and indifferent to my funny accent. And refused to take my rent money because they said I was family. This is America's true national character. Kind, compassion, decent. It is this basic goodness, this pristine goodwill, this generosity of spirit that must always be reflected in America's engagement with the world. The world expects American leadership, but the world also wants to see an American leadership which exercises its enormous power with great heart and wisdom. And this is why I very much look forward to work with all of you to renew the U.S.-Indonesia connection. I return to America for the third time to find answers to some great questions of our time. What happens when the world's only superpower and the country with the largest Muslims constructively engage one another? Can they help cement relations between Islam and the West? Can they help create a world marked not by clash, but by confluence of civilizations? What can be achieved when the world's largest greenhouse emitters work with the country with the largest tropical rainforest, the ultimate anti-emission weapon? Can our joint efforts help save the planet? What is the best way for Indonesia, America, and ASEAN to promote peace and progress in the Asia Pacific and beyond? And how do we better connect 230 million Indonesians and 320 million Americans? And more importantly, how do we manage these complicated connections to ensure that they bring more jobs, more knowledge, more opportunities, more empowerment, more understanding, more peace to our good peoples? These are pretty big questions. And I will devote all my energy to find answers to them. Before I got on a plane to America with my family, a small delegation of people came to the airport to see us off. They were principals and students from the elementary school in Menteng, where the young Obama went to school. They came to hand over of me, to me a bunch of letters to President Obama, which I happily delivered to the President through the State Department. With your permission, I wish to read one of the letters. It is written by hand. Yes. And it reads like this. Dear Mr. Obama, President of the US of A. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Najma. I'm nine years old, and I'm a fifth grader at SDN Menteng 01. I'm so happy because I've been given an opportunity to convey my dreams and hopes, although indirectly. I hope, Mr. President, I would receive you. I hope Mr. President would receive this and read it through. As a student of SDN Menteng 01, I'm very proud to have been given opportunity to learn in a school that have made a president. President of a big country, United States of America. A superpower nation that become the barometer for the entire country in the world. USA is now a reference for all countries in the world, whether in science, technology, and culture. Just like you, I also dream of becoming a great man. The man who is able to work and contribute to progress. My dream world is full of joy and no fear, where the nations in it are friends with each other, tolerance, harmony, and no war. Children can play, attend school, have a place to live, and live with the people they love. Mr. President, as well as a leader of a major country, you are also a world leader. I'm sure you could do much to the progress and world peace. Hold back your hand to help poor countries and stop terrible wars. I'm sure you can, especially to SDN Menteng 01. I wish I could talk to you and meet you directly if I'm given a chance because you are my motivator. You move me to reach my dreams directly. You are the person that makes me confident that I could become a useful person. You have built my spirit. Thank you, Mr. President. God bless you and your family. Yours sincerely, Najma Almira Mifta. <laughs> Little Najma wrote that letter to President Obama. But the more I read this letter, I realized 
that the letter was written not just for President Obama, it was written for America, for all of you. Can we answer the hopes and prayer of Najma? I believe President Obama will say, yes, we can. <laughs> and President SBY will say, Harus Bisa. <laughs> and I say, Inshallah, we will. <laughs> I thank you. Dino for those inspiring and eloquent remarks. The only time I heard remarks as eloquent was in the speeches of SBY. <laughs> in closing, I want to thank all supporters and friends of Yusindo. Give special thanks to tonight's volunteers, organized by Allison Oakley, and our hardworking small Yusindo. Washington staff, Dana Moore, and Carrie Person. Thank you all, and good evening. <laughs>